Ibiza Star TV. And said, where? Downtown? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, this is Ibiza Star TV and today we are in downtown Ibiza with Giuseppe Cipriani. Hello. Hello, how are you? Um, you can tell us a little bit about the beginning of all the Cipriani story which started with Harris Bar, right? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, the, uh, my family started with my, with my grandfather. In, uh, in 1931 he opened his first place called Harris Bar in Venice, which, oh. is, which is still there. Uh, it has been also named uh, a national monument for Italy, so uh -huh. so it's going to be there for a long time, yeah. hopefully. He also was called Giuseppe, right? He also was called Giuseppe, yes. Yeah. He was uh, part of a family of immigrants, mm -hmm. you know, they uh, uh, they went to Germany. In fact, he actually studied in Germany when, he, when, when they were kids, ah. uh, because there was no job uh, in Italy. So they were, you know, those huge families with a bunch of brothers and sisters, and they all moved to Germany and then he came back when the first world war started. But then one day uh, he yeah. met uh, Harry Pickett, Pickering. Yeah? Harry Pickering. Pickering. He, yeah. he was one of his customers. He was a bartender at a hotel in Venice uh, called uh, Europa, uh, which is no longer there. Uh, and uh, oh, the Grand Hotel, actually, I don't remember. And he was a he was a bartender there. One of his customers that usually drink a lot. Uh, one day he wasn't drinking that anymore. So he said, you know, Mr. Pickering, is there something wrong with my martinis? And he said, no, Cimbriani, there's nothing wrong with your martinis. It's just that I ran out of money. <laughs> you know, so yeah. my grandfather was a very generous man and he said, you know, how much money do you need? And he said, you know, I need this amount of money to go back to the, to the United States. Uh, so he actually lent him at that time, it was quite a lot of money for him. In fact, mm -hmm. I think my grandmother wanted to divorce him. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, women, how they are. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, Pickering came back after a while. You know, and imagine having to hear the grandmother every day. You know, you yeah. gave the money to this guy; <laughs> he's never going to come back. Yeah. Uh, you know. So eventually, Pickering came back. He came back, and he and he gave him. He he actually paid him back. Uh, yeah. Because he was from a rich family in Boston. I he was from a, from a rich family yeah. in Boston, yeah. and he he came back. He gave him back his money, and he put some extra money, and together they opened uh, this place called yeah. Harris Bar. Yeah. You know, they f they found a location, uh, and he liked very much the dry martini. So uh, you told me another day the secret of the dry martini in Cipriani that you don't shake it with ice. Yeah, you don't shake it with ice because the ice actually uh, uh, leaves makes it watery. Uh, yes, yeah. makes it watery. And actually, the, the, the only thing that freezes in the martini can be the water. Yeah, so yeah. Th when you see the little uh, Around uh, ice. Yeah. ice. But the, you know, the, the, the open Harris Bar, and I think Harris Bar, it's, it's, uh, the success of Harris Bar was that it was the, really the first bar, the first restaurant bar outside of a hotel. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, you know, originally the... the they either had a bar or they had a restaurant, mm -hmm. but the, the concept of having a, rest, a hotel bar outside of a Separate, hotel, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it, it's it, actually, it actually was a uh -huh. new concept. Uh -huh. you know, so. Uh, so the restaurant started uh, as well with uh, some specialties, and then his son, your father, he started later to write a book with all the famous receipts of Harris Bar, right? Yes. Uh, I mean, you know, my grandfather, he invented the carpaccio, he invented the bellini, mm -hmm. you know, over, over the years he, he, he did a lot of dishes and then my father actually wrote it in this book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all our secrets are, are in this book. Not, not much of a secret, actually, because we really cook basic Italian, basic Italian cuisine, which is, uh, you know, very simple. Yeah, but that's a secret of the Italian cuisine, good products, yes. simple receipts, and then comes out a fantastic dish. Absolutely. It's a mixture of, uh, of all simple things. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you have to, from, from the moment that you shop in the morning to the mm -hmm. moment that you put it to the plate. Yeah, all fresh. So today we will go later in the kitchen, and uh, one of the famous dishes is fegato alla Veneziana. Fegato, la, fegato la Veneziana. You have to get uh, uh, the liver of, uh, which is the fegato, uh, of uh, not, not of an old uh, uh, calves, you know, but, uh, but, a young, uh, but a young calves. Uh, you have to slice it very, very thin. Mm -hmm. 
you have to then saute it in uh, very 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 hot uh, oh, very quick olive oil and yeah. it has to be very hot yeah. because it has to be very yeah. quick otherwise yeah. it gets tougher yeah. so your chef Tony will explain it how to do it Absolutely. thank you very much for being with us and now we go to the kitchen to see how the thank famous you. river is done thank you very much thank you. thank you I'm here today with chef Tito in the kitchen of downtown Ibiza from Giuseppe Cipriani and he will prepare for us now Fegato la Veneziana one of the milestone dish of uh, the Harris bar in Venice Great, so um, you explain us quick what ingredients we need? It's very, very simple. Car pre caramelized onion, polenta, the best quality calf liver, very young cow liver, olive oil, sweet butter, and a lot of love. <laughs> That's a trick, yeah. Okay, let's go. And said, where? Downtown? And I said, yeah, yeah. yeah. Olive oil. Very, very hot. You good? You can do it again otherwise. Away from the flame for a moment. Caramelized onion. And it's done. Yeah, yeah. A piece of style TV. 